Hello, so today I am going to talk about fabric selection. Now, primarily for ladies that are experiencing hormonal changes, so getting really hot and then it disappearing. There are a few things that you can do to, uh, make with garments that you're buying that will really make an, a, a huge difference. I'm going to make today's little video really uh, 101. I can do a more advanced version if that is required. But I would encourage you to look at the labels, look at the composition labels of when you're buying pieces, when you're buying garments, particularly top half, right? So in terms of fast fashion, a lot of the brands and it's not only fast fashion it's it's but it's a lot a huge amount of brands in the market an easy way to bring down prices is to implement or integrate a lot of um, synthetic garments and it might be percentages so it might be um, combinations right so an example of that or some examples of that are polyester, polyamide, acrylic, and nylon. So they're all made in a lab, if you think of it that way. Whereas cotton, silk, wool, um, cotton, silk, wool, linen, they're all made like um, from plants or you know from sheep. You know, so that's a, a really one oh one way to look at it. So these things usually as a blanket statement cost a little bit more than these things so the thing with lab grown fibers are they are hot so if you have a shirt that is 100 percent polyester so a lot of sort of more chiffon or satin um, shirts can often be made and the prints are really pretty there's a lot on the market but they're often 100% poly. Now, when you look at pros and cons, they don't need an iron, they're crease resistant, you can nearly throw them on the floor, pick them up, pop them on again and wear them. So therefore they're good for travel. They are, um, you know, wash and wear, low maintenance, all that kind of thing. The flip side is, it's like wearing a sauna. It is so hot. It is so hot. So I would start to ask you to look at what those labels are. And like there's some beautiful brands that do some lovely pieces, but they're still polyester. If you ever see me recommend brands, usually because I really care about fabric so much, I will usually gravitate to brands that will use either majority or um, blends that are more natural fibres. I've worn this jacket today on purpose. This is cotton with a little bit of lycra. Actually, I made this last weekend, but that's a different video. But the reason why I chose this fabric is, and most things I would go for, they do have a little bit of lycra in them. Now, lycra is man-made, but the percentage is usually 5% or less. And of course, that gives it a little bit of movement. It's ease of movement and it's um, comfort, which, you know, we all tend to go for now, especially bottom half, pants, jeans, even skirts, that, that little bit of lycra. So if you think of your sports gear, your yoga pants, all that kind of thing, they usually are made out of nylon with a little bit of lycra. So all of that is man-made and it's like wearing a sweat box. It's like sitting in a sauna. So for exercise, it's fine. But translate that back to work and business, it's like sitting in a sauna and then you add um, extra lights or nerves with a presentation or whatever. It's like sitting in a sauna. So for top half pieces, think about, so this is a silk, um, it's a crepe de chine that's that's the um, composite, um, the construction, but the composition is this one is 100% silk, so it breathes, it breathes. Now, there's beautiful pieces on the market that might be a silk and a cotton, or cotton with a little bit of lycra. Like there's blends, 
but I would urge you to think about um, those or start to start to educate yourself with what's in those pieces so even we're in Australia and the southern hemisphere we're going we're in autumn we're going into winter a lot of jumpers or knits or sweaters for my American friends they the less expensive ones are often a huge percentage of acrylic in them that brings down the end price so it's very price driven it is like a sauna it is like a sauna the other thing is you know, a puffer jacket which I, clearly I own one as well I had to get a pretty pink one but that the outer shell is 100% nylon so it is like a sauna so when you are thinking in terms of work and professional uh, environment have a look and if there's options that perhaps I've worn this top which you can't see the detail that well but it's got lace applique and it's lots of detail on which I love but it's predominantly cotton with a bit of lycra in it so it gives it a bit of shape because I don't want everything big and baggy but it's the majority so if you can find like there's no blanket rule but I would want three quarters or two thirds of the core fabric to be natural um, I would throw in the mix bamboo and rayon or viscose are in that they do breathe more rayon or viscose is reconstituted wood pulp so it is natural naturally de uh, derived um, so that that one is quite a good one that's one of my favorite fabrics actually um, so or fibers so when you think about these things and the next time you're ready to go and buy um, a cheap and cheerful little top that has a lot of nylon or a lot of polyester in it just do a pause because like this is not about price this is about if you're standing there in this little sweat box it shows through and it makes you know it makes you feel ordinary and then you feel like you're itching and scratching <laughs> all those sorts of things um, and I don't know about you but I don't want any of that so when that all started for me I all, all of my pieces really are high um, either cotton or linen or silk or any of those and um, the majority are the, those compositions so food for thought.